Welcome to the third part of the Azure DevOps series. Um, today we're going to talk a little bit more in depth about repositories and we talk about pipelines in Azure. Uh, to be exact, we talk about uh, build, pi build pipelines the first time um, in opposition to release pipelines, which we won't cover today. And with that, uh, let's go ahead and um, just get started. So, um, just to uh, get us in line, um, as you remember, this is our uh, project here, our uh, team project in Azure DevOps. We had already covered a little bit about branches. Uh, we have this uh, master branch currently. We uh, had a pull request last time from initialization work to master which currently means um, we can um, just delete initialization work maybe, delete branch. <clears throat> and um, what I will cover today too is the first and only time uh, which we're going to talk in this series about work items. So I will do this in order to give you just some hints um, what you could do with work items in combination with uh, branches. And in order to show you this, let's just assume uh, that we go ahead into the backlogs here or the boards, doesn't matter. <coughs> and let's just say we want to do a little bit more of uh, a planning here. So the next part is not meant as a how to manage your work in Azure DevOps. It's just a demo. Uh, so keep in mind, this is um, kind of complicated stuff if you do this seriously. You can do it easily and just move cards around, but um, if you do so, you don't cover the complete sense uh, Microsoft put in um, Azure DevOps. So keep that in mind. We just uh, do a little easy thing and generate a product backlog item, which is uh, often uh, referenced as a user story. And let's say we just want to plan our today's work, which will be um, built or the first uh, build pipeline um, is created and works. So let's just keep it that simple. Um, and now we go ahead and say add a task to this one and this is uh, include the pipeline definition um, and then maybe the next step would be to <clears throat> create a simple test project and then the last part is um, test the pipeline. So that's it. Um, and I I'm not covering any more planning here and I'm just moving this to the committed state, ensuring that in the current iteration, in the sprint, and after I did this, if you're not familiar with Azure DevOps, uh, finally, if you do all this, you get a sprint board, which you should be familiar with. The lanes are, got it, to do, progress done. And now we can go ahead. Maybe I assign this first to me. Um, and uh, those are also assigned to me. And you could plan here, let's say, dot five hours, no, uh, dot five hours here and whatsoever. So <clears throat> in order to get started, you would take a card here, move it to the progress lane, and then you would normally start to work, but not in this demo. The first thing I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna show you is our strategy on branching and connecting work items to branches. So what we do at my company, and you can do your own stuff, of course, but what we do is we go to um, our branches here and you see master is uh, kind of uh, secured here. So what we could do now is go to the boards and say, you know what, this is a story or a product backlog item, generate a new branch, a new source code branch for this story. So <clears throat> let me do this. And uh, the convention in our company is to say story slash one is the name of the story. You will see what the slash means here. So you see here is an ID and Azure DevOps will 
ensure that this ID for each work item, no matter if it's a user story or a task or whatever, always is unique. Um, okay, so story slash one is the name of the branch and it will be generated based on master of my branch. So let's go ahead and do this. <clears throat> and let's go the next step is when I start a task, which means actual work, I generate the next branch on this task and you can see how nicely it is connected into the work item pane here. I can do it directly from here, new branch. And now I call this task-2 and this is based on story-1, uh, slash 1, sorry. So he always uh, jumps into this uh, task, but anyway. So when I take a look from the Git perspective, let me open up my tool here. We would Git Kraken, let me maximize it. So, and when I go to uh, the project, let me open our project here, which is um, the first sample project. And when I now fetch, he already did it. <clears throat> you can see here on the side that it says, okay, I don't have story slash one, but um, as soon as I introduce slashes, and it's a Git feature, not a DevOps feature, he recognizes this as a folder, um, as a hierarchy. So this way I can just group my um, branches and I do this and uh, say, okay, story and task. And now the, the main purpose of this is, I can get rid of this, delete the, uh, oh, I can't delete it, I don't know why. Let's see. Oh, because it's a current branch. Okay, I get it. I, I take this branch locally. <clears throat> now I'm on task two locally and now I can delete this one. And I can also think and delete this one. And now I only have locally, I only have task two. That's it. Now I open <coughs> the folder in which uh, this repo is. Okay, let's take a look here at uh, Coding Freaks first sample. There it is, this is my folder. And now let's say I'm gonna open it with Visual Studio Code. That's it. And <coughs> Visual Studio Code now just wraps a little bit and blah, blah. And now here on the bottom, it says I'm on task two. So, I think it's um, one of uh, the approaches in order to get your work a little bit more ordered and to not come in conflict so easily with your colleagues. So obviously I'm talking about professional development or development in teams, um, which Azure DevOps is meant for. So with this strategy, um, you come from master and you first of all create a branch for the story, which means all those uh, as you will see today, all this work is going first and foremost to this branch. And it's not influenced, um, meanwhile, by other colleagues of you working on other, branch, on other branches. So you can be a pretty stable. Okay, and let's go ahead and talk about what this means. Include pipeline definition, because that's what we have to do now. So let's take a look at the pipelines here and let's talk about this menu, first of all. So Azure Pipelines um, today has a history um, and the first versions of the pipelines were all um, implemented by a graphical user interface here in DevOps or as it's, uh, it, it wasn't named DevOps uh, at this time, but it was all graphical click and click and save and whatever. So that is bad for some reasons, because <clears throat> when you go ahead with your project and your build pipelines uh, changes, your build pipeline um, gets more steps, you will see what a step is. That means you can't say if you click it here, if you manage it here and it's only stored in Azure DevOps, you later on, you can't say how the build pipeline was at a certain point in time. But we have a system here already, which is able to do such tasks like going back in time. And that is, of course, Git. So the idea here is not to create a pipeline by simply clicking through it, which is this link, use the classic editor, 
And now you can go ahead and say, where is your source code? Well, my source code is here. And now you could add steps here. Th those are templates and you could go ahead and say, well, I'm building an ASP.NET or a web app for ASP.NET or .NET Core or whatever. And then you could click here, click apply. And now you have some build steps which you can adjust with this UI. But when you have sa hit save here, that means that the definition in some format is stored in Azure DevOps only. And when you change it, there's no way to say, or there is a way, but it's not a convenient one, which source code version was related to which version of the pipeline definition here. And that's kind of messy. So what will we do instead, leave? Instead of doing this, you create your pipeline in a format um, and you store your pipeline together with your source code. And there are some conventions. So let me show you what this means. This is a folder and let me bring in a file, which is azure-pipelines.yaml. And this file, um, first of all, the naming of the file has a meaning because this is a default naming convention for the pipeline definition, for the build pipeline definition. And um, the thing is, uh, Microsoft says you put this in the root of your um, source code directory and we will see this thing. So let's take a look inside. And already I already prepared um, here <clears throat> a file. So let's go here and check out what, what's going on. So first of all, what we define here is a pool which we want to use in order to perform all the steps here on the bottom. This means they are all documented, by the way, um, in Microsoft DevOps help. So this thing means, you know what, Microsoft, please give me, I think it's a container. Maybe it is a virtual machine. Honestly, I don't know and I don't care. I'm using a so-called uh, managed uh, build uh, pipeline, which means I'm getting this from Microsoft. So <clears throat> this is telling Microsoft, I need a Linux base and Ubuntu is the thing Microsoft uh, gives you. There's, there are other uh, basic VM images um, with Visual Studio pre-installed and stuff like that. Or you could decide to use your own pool of uh, build machines, uh, but that's another topic. Okay, let, let's just assume this means where do I want to run my builds on? On which machine type? The next thing is you define if there are any triggers, automatic triggers. Like for instance, I could change this to this one and say master which means the trigger is if any commit or any change um, is recognized uh, by Azure DevOps on the Git branch master, it will run those steps. And I don't want this. You will see later why. I just want none, no trigger, which makes this a manual build currently. So now there comes the last uh, section, which is steps, which defines the tasks here um, Azure DevOps should perform, in which order it should be performed, they're ordered, and what to do. Uh, so what I do here is a typical uh, Visual Studio build. So I tell him, you know what, uh, this is a display name for the step, we will see this later, and please perform a NuGet restore. It's a NuGet command, do a NuGet restore, and uh, what to restore, the, well, the complete solution. Uh, find any SLN file, uh, in the folder and perform a NuGet restore for each CS project inside. So then comes obviously the build and here you can see he's demanding a variable which is called build configuration. I'll talk about variables later. So this is uh, like uh, calling MS build and or .NET build in this case .NET build and then dash dash configuration and then whatever here in this variable is hidden. The same is true for the unit tests. He's performing unit tests and says, well, you know, we need a parameter there, which is the unit test projects parameter. Um, and because we won't cover unit tests, I just showed you, let's skip this. Uh, we don't have it currently, so let's give it. Okay, then we publish 
with with the dotnet tooling which is uh the equivalent to call dotnet publish and we again give him some uh, uh configuration and we tell him to uh oh no we don't tell him i'll show it later uh to um uh, he will build again for publish which is not good we, we can do this later on better so what we also tell him is you know what the target for the um for the artifacts which are come out of public is this folder and this folder is a magical folder um it is documented again so uh, this variable you don't assign this variable because it is already assigned in each pipeline which is a special folder inside of this image here um, where you can store any artifact it could be an image it could be uh, a sound file whatever it's just a location where you copy the output to and then the final step is pretty important and a lot of people miss it um, just a coffee just a second please mm. this step is so important because everything here happens inside of inside of a machine a docker image or a vm image i don't know but what i know is this machine is just transient which means after this job is done this machine just vanishes and there's no way to come later on to this folder which lives on this machine and to get the artifacts out there so that means the last step must be in any meaningful build to to copy this artifacts from the machine out to um, another directory and this is what happens here he's publishing the artifacts so this is the file uh, so just take it as it is it's it's the most simple file for dotnet core you could imagine and let's say we just um, go ahead and say uh, introduced first version of uh, build definition and let's uh, go ahead and just commit it in here with visual studio code and then we push this to the remote there it is it is pushed and now back here we can take a look at our branches and we will see on task two there it is and on story one it's not so that's why we had this task branch so what we could do now is we could uh, create a new pipeline we won't do it i just want to show you how we get from task back um, to wherever we need so what we do here is we go ahead and create a pull request and we say you know go back to your story and uh, i'll just keep this command for the pull request and the cool thing now is watch here because we created this branch task 2 by using the user interface in the boards he automatically connected the work to the pull request so that means now the pull request has a meaning which means when you see this pull request you not only see the source code what what changed and what commits you now um, also see uh, what work was um, related to this so you bet you have a better understanding as a reviewer what the purpose of this pull request would be okay let's go here and create a pull request because this is a pretty unimportant pull request because we are going from story to uh, from task to story there's no branch security on story everybody can approve so i could approve um, and because i'm the approver i can already uh, complete the pull request so i'll do this by leaving those checkboxes checked which means delete task 2 because i think i'm ready when this is uh, done and also please move the work item to the complete state so let me do this complete a merge which means everything is done he's merging the pull request he should be yes that's it and let's take a look in our board now what happened here and the cool thing is he moved the card from progress to uh, done state and even cooler in my opinion is when you open this card 
you here can see the links to the repository stuff inside the work. So you see here that the PR um, just closed um, the story and moved it to the done state. And you will see this uh, from now on ev um, uh, until eternity, because this isn't uh, deleted. This is as long as this thing lives, uh, this link lives too. So you always can go back in time and see what happened with this task. I think it's pretty cool. Okay, <clears throat> I have the pipeline definition and now let's say we want to go ahead and uh, to test it. So what we do now is we call this an intermediate pull request because as you can see, story one is ahead two commits of uh, master. So I'm going here, creating a pull request and saying I'm going to master and let's say it's intermediate uh, PR. Um, and uh, we always write the intention here. I want to test um, or to configure the build pipeline on master branch because that's what I want to do. So I go ahead and create. And because this is a demo thing, uh, I go and say autocomplete, but this time I clear those because I don't want delete story one. This is an intermediate PR. Uh, I don't want to delete it. I don't want to mark the complete user story as done. I don't want to do it. I just want to merge. And what this says is set autocomplete. What this says an intermediate PR is pretty useful because if you have big user stories and you wait too long with a pull request to uh, back to the source branch, whoever has to review this pull request um, has to check a lot of files in this PR. But now I made an intermediate PR and the only change is this YAML file, which means I think this is stable already, but my story is not finished. I have to, uh, I have a two more tasks in the story or in the user story. So what I want you to do, um, or wh what I want my team to do here is to check just this change, this one fi file, and then I will go on. And this way, everybody else can get my new pipeline, but my story is not done. This is uh, kind of the sense. Now I prove it by myself. Uh, which makes no sense, you know, normally you wouldn't do this, but we allowed this. Okay, cool. Now, when we take a look at the branches, we see story one is still there, master is there. And when we take a look at master, we see there is the pipelines YAML. It arrived here. Nothing more happened. In the pipelines, nothing happened. We just have a YAML file on master branch. And let's go ahead and create a pipeline now the correct way. Let's go here, create a pipeline and what we say now is not use the editor, but let's say tell uh, Azure DevOps that we have a YAML file somewhere and this somewhere is an Azure repos git. You have choices here. You could do external gits too. And this means if you have already a project where you have your source code in Bitbucket, GitHub, GitHub Enterprise or whatever, even subversion, you could say Azure DevOps, I want the build pipelines to um, be run by you, but I want to keep my source code where it is. I think that's a good option. And let me go to the project settings. If you do this stuff, just remember, you could switch uh, this off, the repos, telling you yourself and your team, we don't have repositories in this team project. We don't have boards, we don't have whatever, we only have pipelines, maybe we don't use test plans. That's the job of the administrator here. Okay, just for as a reminder, okay, create a pipeline. It is in YAML file here, it is in this project. And now he already detected it because we named it like uh, Azure DevOps expects us to name this. So now he generated this and remember, I told you <coughs> uh, we have we have parameters here. <coughs> okay, so what's going on? We have uh, first of all this build configuration. Let me copy it out. So we go to variables here in this case, and we create a new variable and we call it build configuration. 
And let's give it the value release because that's the configuration we want to build. Okay, save. Now, uh, he here has restore build projects as a parameter. And let me just go here and show you how you can define this. Um, let's say variables and you can simply do this. And as you can see here, he's telling you, you should reference this this way. And you see, there it is. Okay, and uh, now we are telling him, I think this would be a great or SLN. Let's do this. I think it should work. I don't know exactly. Let's test it out, by the way. Let's be brave. Okay, <clears throat> and now we have a pipeline with no trigger. And you know what? Just test it out. Let's run it. Okay. He's creating the pipeline and now you are presented with um, the pipeline uh, window and we can watch him work. So the first step is to initialize the job, get a machine, get, get an environment, whatever, check out the code. And now here comes a restore step. And he's telling here, uh, okay, I'm restoring, as you can see, you can watch the output here on the console of this virtual machine. And then the build step comes in and he, he says, matching of the pattern was not found. There is no project, which is cool. There's no project, I know. But the pipeline is obviously valid. So when you look here, restore, build, publish, publish artifact, let's go here, restore, build, publish, publish artifact. So he took all those strings and obviously the definition is syntactically correct. That's what we know. So let's go ahead and uh, do a little bit more. So in order to see something, okay, let's go to the sprint and create here a little test project. It's always the same. Now we go here, create a new branch. Let me stick with this. It's a task. It has the ID free. So let me go here. Let, let it come from story, not from master. Be careful here because you can miss some steps in this strategy. Let's go ahead then go to my local tooling, fetch on the remote, take this task, delete the old one locally. And now I'm good to go here. And now I have this task. Let me switch just for convenience reason over to Visual Studio. So <clears throat> what I do now to be a little bit cleaner, many of you may know that I'm a little bit crazy about this. I create a new project and I don't know, I wait, let me just minimize all this stuff. Okay. I use blank solution as a template, which many people are not using. I know this next. And I go to my folder, which is coding freaks first sample. I create a solution called first sample. Okay. Create. I close it after my Visual Studio came down because, oh, I have an update. Cool. It wasn't there today in the afternoon. Anyway, okay. Close the solution again, Co go to the folder and see he made a subfolder, which is pretty unnerving. Let's move this out of here to this area, a little bit up, delete this freaking subfolder. And now I'm good to go and open a project um locally this is how i want it to be so this solution is there and let me go ahead add a new solution folder let's call it uh, ui and now go ahead create a new project in order to see something it's a asp.net web core web application let's go here and say the folder in the file system should match the solution folder. Take this folder, please. And then go ahead and call it UI web app. That's how I do it. Anyway, doesn't matter. And let's say it's a, maybe it's an MVC app. Why not? And I don't want Docker. I just want to be it a plain old IIS or a Kestrel based web application. There it is. That's it already. I don't want any more stuff. 
let's be sure that it builds okay cool and let's be sure that it runs because that's what you do as a developer you don't commit stuff which is not running if you're a good developer it's running it's ugly but it runs and now i'm pretty sure i can do this and say created uh, a first solution uh, no the solution uh, and the ui project that's it commit all and push directly to the task branch as you can see visual studio sees i'm on task free cool now what i can do here as a developer is i can go to the pipelines i have no pull request i can go to the pipeline and tell him you know what run this pipeline but do this please with the source code version which is on task free currently that is cool because that means before i make my pull request and bothering other people with my new idea of the project i could do a pretest and run this pipeline nobody else is uh, disturbed by this normally and i can go to the jobs and watch it and let's see if now he has something to build if i did everything correct probably not i make a lot of mistakes here uh, now he should have something to do here maybe the cs project is the correct one let's see if he can build an sln oh seems so he built he's publishing he's publishing the artifact well all the years finally paid off experience is good okay cool so what do we have now this is a window and it's telling us okay uh, what is um, what is the source version you're building and here's the commit um, I'm building on okay I, he's connecting it I can go here and see the source version which he built it ran just now for 28 seconds which is important I tell you more about this it was published and it is related to one work item which is cool and there's no test because I could take a look here and say get started and he's bringing me there's no test uh, related or oh, he moved away it would be good if they make a new tab but anyway and here's something interested he, uh, interesting here is what we call an artifact and this artifact is still there and what you can see here is a zip file and you can download this artifact and if you take a look at this this is nothing more or less than a web publish uh, package which you could deploy to an IIS um, or an Azure web app as it is we will see this when we talk about release pipelines I'll explain this later so but anyway what you what you now have is a working build okay so this is working and you could decide at this point you know what this is so good let's do let's go here to the pipeline and let's call it uh, or let's make it a continuous build which means i want this build to be a condition for any change on the master branch okay let's take a look here what what does it mean the master branch already has conditions from the last series this branch policy this those are the conditions let's go here and watch the policies again so what we said currently we need a reviewer and sadly but you know that's a tribute to the demo i can review my own pull uh, um, changes which is not good this is a bad checkbox okay this is senseless but anyway uh you could do by the way this one if you have not enough people in your team and so you can say yourself can do it but it makes no sense this one is the same as this combination you know what i mean because that means one other person has to review this stuff anyway so now what we can check on because we use work items we could check on you know what i want work items to be linked to the pull, to the change every time it is required that at least one work item is linked to any change which is good also you should do it but sometimes you can't because you're not using work items here uh, but instead you're using Jira or whatever maybe then it's not so easy to do this 
um, but it's possible you can link Jira. But anyway, let's let's stick with this. Uh, the command rule solutions um, is uh, checked on all the time. You could use this one. We are using it this way. We are not allowing squash or rebases. We only uh, no fast for, uh, forward or rebase and fast forward. Those are allowed merge types. That's our um, our uh, how it's called uh, policy. Yeah, policy. Just a sip of coffee again. Sorry. Mm. And um, yeah, here you go. Uh, that's it. Then here comes the important step. Because now we have a build pipeline definition, we could use it and say, you know what, add a build policy and tell Azure DevOps, you know what, I want this build pipeline, which he detected here. This is the name of the pipeline. It's not a good name. We will see this. And I want to have an automatic trigger right now. Remember, that when we go to Visual Studio Code again and watch here, we have no trigger in the pipeline definition. What we do now is we set a trigger in Azure DevOps. That is okay because uh, you have more control about how the trigger should work. So, and I save this. He says, every time a change is going to happen on the master branch before the merge happens, I will check the change if it at least builds and of course if you have unit test steps inside of it it will check the unit test steps and if any of the step fails in normal condition the complete merge operation is rejected by azure devops so you can be sure that whatever is on the master branch it will build that's what this makes a kind of continuous integration build that's what we mean here and that's why I go to the pipelines and I just rename this thing to be more precise. Um, here is the thing to rename it and I can rename it to first sample CI in order to make clear that this is a continuous integration build. Okay, that's what I do. So now check it. When I now go to the repos and do my first pull request to say let's um, uh, move this to this. By the way, why is this behind of master? What is going on? Why is what is the change? Intermediate PR has run and here's the pipeline. I never changed it. I think this is wrong, by the way. It is not behind. But anyway, let's do a pull request from task to story to story. And let's say this is exactly what I did and it's linked with the work again and I go create. I complete it by checking the checkboxes because I want the task to be done. And that's it. I don't have to approve it anymore. The merge is happening. That's not an important point. Let's look at the pipeline. Nothing happened. The pipeline is just the last result because we did it on task three here. The run but nothing happened because of the pull request okay now ch go here again and now do another intermediate pr okay let's go from story to master and now something should happen because i told you whenever somebody tries to change master something should be checked by the pr uh, by the um, pipeline so let's check Let's go here and let's say intermediate PR. Um, <clears throat> uh, we have an UI project and we are glad about this. And that's it. That's all. Let's create this thing. And as soon as this happened, you already see a change. You see the build is queued. The build is in progress here. So you in this window, you already in this pull request window, you already see what happens. And let me go over in a new tab to the pipelines. It simply means the pipeline is running. That's what you see here. It's exactly the same busy indicator. But for convenience reasons, Microsoft is so cool to show it inside here. So you don't have to leave this window. Okay, um, let's go here and say at least one reviewer must approve. And let's play it a little bit through. Let, let's do a little bit more. And let's say 
in the files, uh, we go here and we take a look at the, all this stuff. And let's say uh, I'm telling myself in this case, but you know what I mean. Uh, this is crap because I'm just using the old stuff, some version of some libs. It's just part of the template of ASP.NET Core and I, I don't want it that way. Okay, so let's go here and tell him, um, let's say, remove, well, please, remove uh, all JS lib references from the source. Okay, let's command here and now another condition comes on the top, which says to me, you can't, um, you know, I can't complete this thing for two reasons. First of all, you must take care of the commands here on the bottom. And second of all, uh, never, nobody has approved. And now I do something which is pretty senseless. Uh, it all only makes sense if you have two uh, people working here and you go here and say, wait for offer. So what you can say as an approver is I'm done with this pull request. I checked all the files. I went through it and this can take some time and now I'm tired and I go to bed. So, and you don't want to reject the complete thing because basically everything is okay, but you have some remarks and you can approve it because it's a, perfect pull request, you can approve it with suggestions to tell, well, I did it, but I have some remarks on this, you know, uh, or you say, no, I can't do it in this version. You have to change something. I left commands for you. I wait for you. Okay, cool. So there were commands and let's say we go back to our source code and I'm still on task free, which is bad because task free does not exist anymore on the server. So what I do now normally as I go to story one, because I can delete locally um, this task free, it's no longer existing. And now I take care of the pull request directly on the story branch. Okay, let's go here and let's say, um, I, I'm gonna fake it a little bit. Okay, let's go ahead, go over here and let's say the lib folder, uh, let's say bootstrap is gone. Let's delete this. Uh, delete yes and let's say uh, that's it uh, and I go over here uh, and let's do it just just do it bootstrap CDN let's take it from a content delivery network and there it is uh, the CSS and the JavaScript and the bundle and let's say I don't I need this uh, maybe this and I go to my layout page this has nothing to do with my uh, with this tutorial, but anyway, you get the point. So instead of having bootstrap from my local folder, I take it from the CDN. It's not the best way to do it, I know. And let's take the bootstrap uh, stuff, the lib stuff also from the CDN. So and now let's go ahead and remove the complete lib folder. Let's say this one and now do the same with jQuery. Um, where is it? Let's just so that you get an idea. jQuery f minified, please give me this one. Let's copy this out. Let's take jQuery from here. Oh no, it was the complete one. No, please not. An exception occurred. Well, that's crazy because I did nothing. Uh, or is it still running? No, my studio went down. Okay, happens over and over again. All We all know it. Let's go here in Visual Studio Code, views, shared, layout, and let's do it correctly. This is cool. And let's do it here. I don't know what's going on. Okay, that's the script now. And now let's check if, um, because I'm not sure if he's deleting the files correctly. Uh, WW root JS. Uh, oh, the libs folder is gone. I like it. Okay. Now um, I should uh, check the source code uh, to be building and running. Uh, what's going on? Okay, delete it. Maybe this one. Yeah, this one. The first sample. 
I still love Visual Studio. That's why I use it. You have to be, uh, you know, loyal with the tools, even if they uh, just suck sometimes. Okay, build it. I have to say, I'm a little bit unfair because I have, you know, in the background, ReSharper is trying to come up, I think. Oh, it's not even trying. <laughs> anyway, it's disabled or what? I don't know. Uh, oh, there is coming. It's just lame. Reshop is telling me over and over again it's not lame and I do the update, but it's lame. It slows down, but I, I love it. You know, it's bad. It's a bad relationship. Okay, let's F5 this. And let's see if it still works at least. If we don't get any 404 or whatever, it's still working here. Let, let's do a cache free refresh and that looks cool. And I could check the network if it's. Uh, Strictly coming from the correct places where it is. I don't know. You know what I mean. Not part of this tutorial. Seems cool. Stop this and just say, okay, removed um, uh, lips or replaced lips. And let's commit and push it and watch what the PR is doing. So I did nothing. I did not re re refresh. And <clears throat> what you should see now is that here is a timeline coming up and he says, you know, just now um, something has uh, uh, changed um, and uh, this complete thing has changed. What I, what I s expected to do is, yeah, uh, to do a new, P, a, a new build because I changed. He automatically created a new uh, build here because he has to recheck everything because he does not know if this affects the build and <clears throat> uh, what I don't see here let me refresh it he should show us um, that this is building let us see when I say done reply and resolve and let's give me an upvote for this because I uh, saw this issue and all required uh, checks succeeded, which is true because this is succeeded too. And uh, now we're good to go. No merge conflicts. And now I could approve. So you could do other stuff too. Just I just want to show you the pull request experience a little bit more deeper. You could go here and say something like, you know what? This is not good because this is uh, not our default. Um, namespace okay command so now you command it and now as you do it you already have commands must be resolved and you see what is marked on and you can do okay i know later okay reply and resolve and now it's resolved again so you have a discussion going back and forth and you have a timeline going on here okay cool what you also can do when you command you can be a, let's take another file and let's go here and say you know what this guy should be this is suggestion should be namespace um let's say coding freaks first sample blah 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 command and now you not only command but you are a pretty pretty decent reviewer and um sparing time for everybody saying okay you know what I have time, I just give you a hint, maybe we should do it that way. And I could go here and apply this change directly from here. I won't do it. Um, uh, and I could say, uh, no, uh, uh, everywhere or nowhere. No, not just on this place. Reply resolve. Okay, I just uh, resent it. Okay. But I would, what I could do is I could go to the layout page here let's say uh, let's go here and directly in the code let's say view data title is not ui web app it is demo app or first demo okay let's go here no that was crap i wanted to suggest let's call it this way comment and now I'm as the coder come here again. You always have to remember this back and forth between two people. And now I say, well, good idea. First demo, why not? Apply this change. And now he says, you know what? 
do, do you want to commit directly in the browser and say yes commit and you have a commit window with all the changes directly on story one and you commit and when you go over to the overview and to the pipeline you see he's running again the pipeline is running again commands must be resolved so where is it resolve and now you see well the pipeline is running you have to wait for the pipeline and I could say, you know what, this is fine if the pipeline went through. I can say approve. And now I'm just waiting here. Autocomplete is set on. Um, I can watch him building here. And you can have opened this without any Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code open. You see, you can be in the train or in wherever. And you can even uh, do this on the phone uh, or better on the tablet, whatever, just having a browser and you still are able to work. I want to mention that this experience will get even better when the GitHub dev or code spaces. I'm not sure. Well, what is it? GitHub uh, code spaces. Yeah, that's what's coming up and will be um, the next thing. Uh, you should check this out definitely. What you will get basically is you have a pull request here. Uh, in, this shows the GitHub integration, but it will be integrated into Azure DevOps 2. And you can open a code space with if nothing less than a Visual Studio code here. You can see it here in the browser where you have the full experience, whatever you want, to edit this pull request with a development tool without having an installed version on your machine. That should be the coolest thing ever in this, in this area. Check this out, Cold Spaces. Um, okay, if you have seen the Dev Spaces from Microsoft, they won't be published. Just a side note: Microsoft won't do it. Uh, they uh, do it, and they said, "Okay, uh, uh, we left it in favor for the DevOps uh, for the GitHub Cold Spaces." Okay, so now this pull request uh, is still there. It's still active, which is not good because I auto-completed it. Uh, I don't know why it's there, to be honest. Something strange happened, but let me complete it. Don't delete it because it's... Um, I don't know what happened. Maybe I clicked something which was incorrect, but let's see the branches there. The, the branches are already, everything is already merged. As you can see here, everything is on the main branch. We have the pipeline running, which means now the last pipeline has the complete. Here is it. You see all the runs for the seconds. I just talk about this in a minute. And now you can see here that you have success. And here's your artifact. Here's your latest version of your UI. This should contain the correct thing. And the next time when we took, uh, take a look at releases, uh, we will deploy this to Azure. That's what we're doing in the, in the fourth um, part of the series. But let me go back to the pipelines once more. So as I told you in the runs, you can see all the runs historically. You can delete runs if you don't need them anymore, but just, uh, or you can say retain them um, longer than the default retain policy says. Well, you, you can do this in the project settings. You have uh, the pipelines and you have, I'm not sure where this is, release retention, here it is, or build retention. You have some default um, settings here in the pipelines. Uh, on, and here you see the retention policy for the artifacts. And here you can see what the defaults are. And you have to keep in mind that if you change values here or if you start using continuous integration, stuff like that, you definitely have to take a look to your organization here, to the organization settings. And at some point you have to take a look to the billing here. We didn't cover it in the first step um, uh, deeper. The billing is pretty important now because what we are using now is a CICD at least CI, CE, CD we're not using. So what, we, what you see now here is <clears throat> I have already billing configured and I have said, you know what? I want one parallel paid job, which means I have 
unlimited time on the build machines. I, I, I'm not limiting. If, if you do a zero here, it already changes. This is a default setting and it says, you know what? 1,800 minutes of build time are included. They are always included, 1,800 minutes. But if you are already suspicious that this organization, mind my words, the complete organization needs more build minutes, which means each project is summed up, each build minute in each project is summed up to a value. And if you hit the 1,800, you can't perform any more build until the next billing period. So to avoid this, I go to the one here, which means it's paid. Honestly, um, <clears throat> I'm a little bit lost what this uh, means uh, in terms of uh, a price. Let me uh, see Azure DevOps pricing. So I think you are pretty interested in this. In this. Uh, let's go here and say Azure Pipelines is coming per extra Microsoft hosted CICD parallel job is I'm currently at around 30 bucks a month paying this. So you have 1,800 minutes included. As soon as you come over, you, uh, you're paying this um, and it, it's always for a complete organization, which for a company is pretty okay. If this is too much for you, you are obviously uh, kind of in the student area, in the private area, whatever. You have other possibilities uh, to do this or maybe 1,800 minutes are enough for you. I don't know. Another thing which you have to keep in mind is two gigabytes of uh, space for artifacts is free. So artifacts, remember, we deployed our zip file somewhere. And then when you take a look here in the project settings, um, you've seen here in the, where was it, settings, that when we raise this to keep the artifact symbols attachment, whatever, to a higher level, let's say three years or whatever, then you have to keep in mind that maybe you hit this limit now. And then per extra gigabyte, you pay one, euro and 70 cent per month or always per month so you can do this calculation here and if you have four gigabytes instead of two um so you pay additionally if i think additionally free yeah you have a free no, zero to two are free two to ten are this one uh and so on so on uh the gigabytes get less and less uh, so the maximum is i don't know Okay, the next thing which can cost you is um, if you need more than five basic users and one more basic user comes with five euro, which is not that much per month. And you can delete the user each month. You don't have to pay one year or whatever. Uh, this one is pretty serious. The, de the test plan user, uh, which is 43 bucks. And to be honest, I don't know a lot of teams using this. Some teams I know use it. If you have a Visual Studio subscription, this one uh, means nothing to you because you already paid it. If you ever ask yourself, why is Visual Studio so expensive? One reason is um, if you have a professional enterprise Visual Studio, you have this included in each DevOps organization you are a member of, which is pretty valuable for me because I'm a member in a lot of organizations. So we covered this and this means be careful here. And now you understand why in the runs you see here as the runs, but maybe you don't see if you go here, maybe you can't uh, hit the artifacts anymore. Okay. That's the point. And you now understand why this time, the 51 seconds is so important for you. And uh, to say at the last point, some important words uh, with a more criticism towards Microsoft, be careful here because currently our build pipeline is kind of not, not perfect. If we look here, you see that 
oh he understands it but we have the restore here running 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 you have to take a look here and then we have a build and i'm not sure if this build is um yeah uh, is correct because i think he may restore it once more here i don't know exactly because 188 milliseconds is not 15 seconds so maybe he auto discovered but there are build switches which you have to put here and i say i think they are something like no restore here and it's it's an argument here and you could say i think dash dash no restore which you can determine if you go here and you say dot net build and you are getting help on .NET build. And I think there it is, no restore. Yeah, you need this flag. Because when you restore explicitly, you don't need to, you want to ensure that he's not restore on build. So you should add no restore here. I just leave it right now. And here on publish, you should add on .NET publish dash help. There should be a, oh man, there should be a no build, no, a no restore too. You should do it there too. I think no build is not included, no. But a no restore on both of those steps should be good because you have an explicit restore here. And this is important because uh, if you do something wrong here, you might lose time here in those steps. That's why they show you the time. And that's important because the sum of this time is what you pay. Um, so that goes into the 1,800 1, seconds and you won't avoid uh, uh, crap happening here. So my criticism now towards Microsoft is if you do certain steps and you add a step, for instance, a famous one is the NuGet, um, uh, is a NuGet step which I will show you the NuGet, um, let's say Azure DevOps YAML NuGet. And let me show, well, NuGet. And there's a step uh, where you can say, uh, you know what, I want to use a special NuGet tooling and then I want to perform the, uh, the step. I don't know if, by the way, I show you the docs here and you see it's pretty good. Um, uh, documented so you see all the options blah 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 and just trust me there's somewhere is uh, a step where you can choose a certain version of nougat to be used which is sometimes pretty important and when you do this and do a nougat, nougat restore what you experience is a lot of wait time on this step so imagine you see here like four minutes uh, or something like that and you get crazy not be, not only because your build is so long and so lame, uh, but also because you pay this stuff and you get over your 1,800. So what you could do then is you can complain and um, vote up the ticket which is there. I think in the in the DevOps um, uh, ticket system, you could do this and wait, or you could decide to go up, spin up your own. Uh, build machines and change it here in this pipeline definition. It's not part of today's uh, thing to say, no, this one, I use my own pool. And this way you don't have this to have this uh, step to install a certain tool version because you have control over this VM image. There are pros and cons for this steps, but I just wanted to mention that this is not um, just shiny and golden and everything is cool. That's not the intention here. I still find it pretty cool. The complete concept Microsoft uh, goes here, YAML files, um, definition in your, in your source code and um, the integration between work repositories and pipeline is just great. Uh, so in the run, you always can see what was building, what was the work uh, assigned to it. You just simply click it and you have this a query telling you this was the work item which was um, here and then the final step today would be to say you know what we tested the pipeline that's it and now I can go and uh, do this uh, delete on this stuff 
and say, well, I don't need another build because I changed nothing. And I just go here and say, it's done. Let's do it cool. Let's do it here. You know what? It's done. And when this is done, uh, I have to manually delete the branch here and tell him, you know what? Uh, delete. I'm done. So now I'm left with master. I just update my tools. And I hope I could show you um, how we work and it was kind of interesting and you could follow. It's kind of hard for me to um, keep on track and do it logically, but I hope I got it a little bit. Uh, next time we will talk about the other things here um, included and I go a little bit deeper and I will show you some real pipelines to um, uh, we will uh, implement something here. We don't cover work anymore. That's it. And I hope uh, you had an interesting hour and uh, see you.